What's up, everybody? Polius here. Welcome to a new thing that is completely different. I am opening Guilds of Ravnica, the booster box, and I'm doing it with a friend. Say hello, friend. Hey, everybody. Uh, so this is Jared. He tried getting me into magic back when we both were in college, but the play group that he played with was not the best for learning how to play the game. They're this, they're just a, a little bit more tryhardy than someone learning the game really serves. No offense, Jared. No, you just, you know, you gotta weed out the weak. You just gotta <laughs> crush it out of them. Talk we were just trying to, we were just trying to break all the weakness out of you and leave only strength. Yeah. So, which one just <laughs> has the job that inquires all the physical activity now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, man, so, those computers are heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all those electrons. So, uh, I, I didn't get into it. That was back during, uh, what what set was that? That was the original uh, Zendikar set. Because I remember, pulling, uh, I remember pulling that the sounds about Hydra. right. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. But now you know I, I have been playing since Ixalan, and uh, so Jared is predominantly a commander player, whereas I play basically whatever kitchen table group my my coworkers play, and sometimes commander, sometimes brawl, sometimes weird casual decks that are about as powerful as a standard deck but have soul rings in them. <laughs> uh, my coworkers have some pretty fun decks. They're not necessarily great, but they're fun. Uh, so this time we are going to be talking about the sets of uh, the Ravnica set, the what we're looking, what we're excited about, and specific cards that I pull from the booster pack. If you're not interested in hearing about any of the initial preamble, go ahead and skip ahead to the video when you see the first card, which we'll be revealing, which is Impervious Great Worm. If I can figure it out. YouTube is still a mystery to me. I'll try to make a uh, link to the video right about there-ish. You know, wherever I end up putting it, probably somewhere on Liliana, the Liliana image. Uh, until then, Jared, so what are you excited about for Ravnica mostly? Uh, honestly, I'm just always happy to return to that particular uh, environment of... Uh of Magic the Gathering lore, I suppose. Uh, I've always liked Ravnica just because I really like any sets that emphasize on multicolored cards uh, because for Commander, multicolored cards tend to be king, um, except for, of course, your monocolored staples. But uh, it's always fun to... the most horrible, disgusting, degenerate Porphyros tech. <laughs> I don't like playing against it. It's beauty. It's... It's fiery beauty. It's beauty anyway. the same way that a Dalek finds <laughs> hatred beautiful. <laughs> no, it's just mach it's machine consistency more than anything else. But anyway, um, but yeah, it's it's really exciting to see fun multicolored legendaries because uh, you just get a lot of potential for really cool deck crafting. And I thought this set in particular did a pretty good job of uh, bringing out some really interesting ones. One in uh, particular comes from my favorite guild, which uh, I'll keep a secret to see if we crack and then we can discuss about it later. Oh, and for my point, actually, I was like, kind of disappointed with the legendaries in this set. Uh, oh, really? It was a little bit. I mean, Niv Mizzet is cool. He does a lot of the, a lot of really cool things, but mm -hmm. it's kind of the same Niv Mizzet with a, with a more kind of. I'm 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 being a little reductionist. I was disappointed with Aurelia. I was really excited to see what they do with her. It just <laughs> seems like a downgrade. I was about to say, I think what you're really trying to say is I was disappointed with Boros this set is really well, Bor what you well, wanted see, here's to the say. Thing is that Boros is going to be really fun at standard. I actually oh, yeah, the yeah. Boros Bugler deck. But yeah, it's just... Well, I thought they were going to do cool things with Boros when they released Firesong and Sunspeaker, which, for anyone who doesn't know, is a Boros... Uh, is a legendary Minotaur cleric that makes your red spell, red instants and sorceries have lifelink, and your white ones make fire... Uh, your white instants and sorceries that gain you life make Firesong and Sunspeaker lightning bolt something. Great! That sounds awesome! We're going to have a Boros thing that doesn't just attack. And they've got some Boros cards that help facilitate that in Ravnica, and if I find one, I'll point it out. But for the most part, the Mentor mechanic is just really disappointing. It's a really bad bolster. Yeah. It, like, that's, my, that's my issue. Is yeah. It's nothing <laughs> new. It, At and least, it's, well, mm -hmm. Celestia's Convoke mechanic has... It, yeah, it's really useful for every format. Yeah. Mentor is just kind of it's it, i'm sure it'll be it'll be amazing in like you said in those certain formats it'll be great but yeah and in, in a commander setting where kind of getting your creatures to be uniquely powerful isn't really important just because of the sheer amount of wiping 
that tends to be in the game. I yeah, I really don't see a lot of value in the mentor command uh, in the the mentor mechanic in Commander. Yeah, maybe if it was green, then you could make some kind of hardened scale shenanigans. But yeah, do some sort of like trickery with plus one plus one counters. Like maybe some sort of horrible amalgamation of Boros and uh, Simic. But that seems like way too many colors at that point. So. Well. Fortunately, commander will uh, wizards will never make the mistake of giving us four color commanders. That would be it's, silly. It's gonna happen. It's, it's inevitable. Happened. It was commander what sixteen? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started then. I think so. It's gonna be a little out of focus. Maybe I can bring it up a little bit. This is we were trying to figure it out. It's taken us about an hour and a half to get this to work. So the impervious great worm, which is a 1616 worm creature for seven regular mana for seven green 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 it has convoke and the convoke mechanic is celestine's unique mechanic which says your creatures can help cast the spell each creature may tap while casting the spell to either uh for any for the the colorless mana or for one mana of that creature's base color so in other words you can make the this creature cheaper for all the other creatures you have on board yep it has so, yeah. indestructible it's a Big old fatty on the ground with indestructible. Yeah, he's a he's an interesting one. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of quick to actually probably dismiss this creature in Commander at least, um, just because a big thing that doesn't have any trample or any form of way to get around chump blocking is kind of looked down upon. Um, but I could see this thing being really strong in uh, what's the name of that bear? I always forget her uh, name. The legendary Orclaw, Kill, uh, Terror Orclaw. of Calcisma. Yeah, she gives trample if I recall correctly. She does you know who else um, this card would be really good for? Who's that? Savala. It, it's going to be great in a bunch yes, of power matters yeah. decks. Yeah. Um. Anything. Yeah. Anything that exploits like a raw number is going to be amazing. Um. There's like Soul's Majesty. I mean would be incredible um there's like uh i know what is it inner fire i think if you splashed it for a red in a red deck you could do inner fire to just like chunk people for 16. Yeah. um there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with this guy um and easily just starting to throw keywords on him immediately his value becomes really strong uh trample is the kind of the big obvious one for sure menace uh, is another get some, really good one yeah flying menace um lifelink i mean just turning that into suddenly a 16 point health swing would be huge and i could see this being good in a token deck with say uh who's who's her face uh the, the original tristani because yeah you gain know, 16 so you life play it, i mean you've got tons of creatures to convoke with and then you gain 16 life Boom. definitely now what do you use that life for oh, there are a bunch of cards that allow you to do that now the problem with this is indestructible actually does not feel like it needs that much in commander You've got Tuck, you've got Bounce, you've got Exile, you've got Control Magic. Yeah. There's, there's uh, a lot that can actually circumvent Indestructible. I feel like Hexproof is actually a more powerful effect than Indestructible is in Commander. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of, especially Exile, uh, there's a lot of Creature Exile and Permanent Exile uh, now, played in Commander. What so. this is going to be great in is Brawl. Brawl has, it's got Vraska's Contempt, and some other things that say deal damage to target creature if that creature would die this turn it, it's exiled instead which yeah that's that's actually i don't think that works against the indestructible things no it doesn't but it does have some it, it has uh in bolus's clutches to steal it and it's got a few uh o-ring effects but in green oh you can destroy those easily you can destroy all those enchantments you'll be fine so this card is actually going to be really sticky in in any brawl deck and i see yeah. it being quite effective there yeah and even in the modern play set uh this thing is going to be incredible against what's probably going to become the most popular removal ever which is assassin's trophy yep it so, does not get around him so i think we've discussed this card to death let me put it to the side and let's open our first booster pack here Awesome. So what kind of stuff are you looking uh, to get? Um, I you know, I just complained about it, but I do want some Boros cards. <laughs> I know. I, I actually, I have a Brawl deck, that, a green-white Brawl deck that I am looking to turn into a Commander deck, so a lot of the Celestia cards are going to be great, and there's mm -hmm. just 
there's so many fun things in Demir that yeah. I would be delighted to get some Demir and some Isaac cards, especially because I just got my hands on the original Joyra, the Joyra of the Gitu, and I'd like to make a deck with her. I think she'd actually, that Niv Mizzet would be really great with her. Yeah. So, <laughs> first pack. You know, it just uh, occurred to me, you can neatly sort the rares right onto your mouse pad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, sort of. It's multicolored, so. Right, right, yeah. So, I had that backwards. So, I think we can leave these to the side. Or the uh, the uncommons yeah. and commons. Unless we see something of no. I actually yeah. so Hasda Marshall is kind of a fun card. Whenever it, uh, it at least two other creatures attack, uh, create a one one soldier creature with lifelink. So it's it's battalion with lifelink. Okay, yeah, that's pretty neat. Ah, I have gotten a lot of use out of the World Soul Colossus. Is uh, Celestia and uh, Celest or is X Green White with Convoke that create that comes into the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. I've had some fun with that in sealed. Here we go. First rare is the Runaway Steamkin. Whenever you, uh, it is one and a red for a one one elemental. Whenever you cast a red spell, if it uh, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than plus three plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Runaway Steamkin. Remove three plus one plus one counters on Runaway Steamkin. Add three red mana. So hmm, red, interesting. Red, red. Uh, so yeah, this sort of uh, this sort of archetype is. Pretty familiar to a lot of red players. Uh, that idea of like you play red creatures that combo off of you casting spells. Um, specifically, I remember there's a lot of creatures. Uh, Kiln something. Uh, I remember him being like uh, a one a one in something. But every time you'd cast a spell, he'd get uh, like a plus two or plus three until end of turn. And uh, this kind of follows up in that similar vein. Uh, but has this kind of neat little added uh, mechanic where, if need be, you can put a whole bunch of counters on him and then drain them off to get some excess mana that you can either ramp into something bigger later on um, or just, hey, he's going to get blocked and killed anyway. I'm just going to refund his mana into a cool spell that I can follow up with. I see he, him being really good in a Naya plus one plus one counter deck. Mm -hmm. uh, though with the with the green there, you really don't need uh, you really don't need the ramp. Uh, he's actually pretty solid in in sealed with the mentor effects because that that helps oh, yeah. you get those yeah. plus one. That's why I like this card. It's clearly an is it card, but it has synergy with mentor. Yeah, which is pretty neat. However, That's always fun. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, just it's always fun to see that kind of cross blending of mechanics between the guilds. I expect uh, we're going to see it... a lot of that in the uh, the the third block with Ravnica. Oh yeah, yeah. Just based on the theming of the Which, set. Yeah. I'm also hoping we're going to see some tricolor, like tricolor characters. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. So here we go. If any of the ally guilds. Yeah. Let's, let's see what Miss Aurelia gives us. And I need a trash bag. Jared, why didn't you tell me to get a trash bag? I'm sorry. All right, well, I'll I tried. Just throw it behind me. Uh, anything good here? Not really. Though a Borium Elemental is a seven or is a uh, seven five uh, with con or with Convoke for seven green green. It's also got Hexproof, which is going to be a bomb in uh, what is it sealed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, nice. So my first mythic is Trastani Discordant. Other creatures, uh, she is a 1-4 legendary creature dryad for 3 green-white. So she anthems. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. When she enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. In the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. She's aight. So, yeah, uh, but... I mean, really, the big focus point on this is she's five mana, and you receive a one four and basically two two twos with lifelink. Um, so that's an enormous amount of stats for five, because uh, you're effectively getting a five eight um, of stats off of five mana. And if you had any other creatures up into play up until this point, that's just extra icing on the cake. So yeah, she's a really strong. A uh, really strong drop on five for I sure. I feel um, like she's not a good commander. I think she's better in the ninety nine. No, I would rather yeah. have the original. I'd rather have the original Tristani. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think there's definitely better green white commanders. Um, I could see her getting played like as a side 
legendary perhaps in some kind of um because what you could do with her is that that last effect is interesting and it does actually come into play in commander enough times that she could make for a reasonably good sideboard because there aren't a lot of effects that will just let you regain control of creatures that have been taken over by other players right. so there actually is some reasonable application for her as sort of like a tech card for those decks that would otherwise need to play um what is it nesting saurian i think is the other card that has a very similar effect where but i think it returns all permanents and not just creatures but uh even still uh basically having a better creature and having that effect, even if it's slightly more limited, I think definitely makes it uh, makes it worth yeah. it. She's good. I don't think she's anything to be wowed about, but she's she is a good card. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, next pack. Come on. Tell I don't open booster packs often. I'm having way more trouble. You're with this. doing it wrong. Uh, <laughs> shush you. This is a neat, neat one, uh, gaining flying for two mana, but mm -hmm. uh, hey, the reprint of Goblin Electromancer. Oh, good card. Here we go. We were talking about having Trample on a big fatty. The Siege Worm is a 5-5 five, five with Convoke and Trample for five green green. That's kind yeah. of what we were talking about. Uh, anyway, oh, we got two things here. So first of all, Experimental Frenzy. You may look at the top card, of, uh, so it's an enchantment for three and a red. You may look at the top card of your deck uh, at any time. You may play the top card of your library. You can't play cards from your hand. And then for three and a red, destroy Experimental Frenzy. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's an interesting card. It helps try to address red's frequent problem of... I run out of gas, what do I do now? Um, so if you're kind of in that state where... Hey, my hand is, you know, my hand is just garbage. I can't do anything with this. Um, you can very easily just kind of pop this thing out and just <laughs> hope for the best. Just start throwing stuff off the top of your library. Um, I, I uh, feel like it, red itself on its own has enough card draw with looting and their hasty draw where you exile the top card of your deck and then. Yeah, this has a bit of a uh, an iffier place perhaps in Commander, unless you're working off of some sort of mechanic that specifically wants to utilize stuff off the top of your library, um, like some kind of Fate or Scrying deck. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I, I would have really liked this card, I think if it was a artifact and not an enchantment, because Red has a lot of useful tools for sacking artifacts, and I could see this having kind of a cool position where like in a Duretti deck, you get this out to kind of uh, go through some cards off the top of your library if you didn't really have anything good in hand. And then when you're done with it, you can just use Duretti to sack it and uh, pull an artifact out of your graveyard. But because it's an enchantment, it, it definitely makes its usefulness in a red deck. Um, you're pretty much only going to be able to kill it for its its own built-in destroy effect, unfortunately. Yeah, I do feel like this is kind of... a card that's going to see some use maybe in a dedicated modern deck or in standard where they play out their yeah. hand and then they've got nothing yeah. else so this then becomes the last card you play at that point you know you're just running whatever your deck is yeah uh also although uh kind of a small although i just thought of it uh, kind of a small thing you could do with this which would be interesting is uh it it's uh you can kind of use it with top in an interesting way. Oh yeah, since he's divining top about or scroll. Yeah, because you could just, you could just like throw the top back on the library and then replay it. Uh, so. Oh yeah. I guess if you had some like enter the uh, like if an artifact enters the battlefield triggers, you could kind of do some interesting little shenanigans with that, I suppose. Yeah. So the uh, foil I got here is maniacal rage. It is in a common, but hey, actually, I, I like this card a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. it is. Two, it is um, one in a red for an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gains plus two, plus two, and cannot block. I mean, there are hmm. some fun car, uh, fun effects I can see with that, like with Xantha Sleeper Agent, where you make it like so someone's got this big old thing that they're going to block Xantha with, and you make yeah. it so it can't block. Those uh, those solid, those solid, efficient, low level auras. Uh, I mean, they 
they can get some work done if they're not addressed. I yeah, mean, I want to make a Tiana Prison Warden deck, but I also well, want to have friends. So, a lot of the, <laughs> a I lot of the time, make, so I also don't want to make a Prison Warden deck. A lot of the times, people will kind of poo poo on enchantments because it's like, well, you're just gonna lose two cards for one, uh, from one card. But at the Why same you time, you kind of just have to look at it from like a value situation. I mean, uh, it's really like getting a two mana two two with haste. Uh, that's why you enchant. Uh, that's why you enchant your opponent's creatures. Yeah. Dazzling light. So the surveil mechanic from Demir is really great, and Commander, I feel Ooh, like surveil yeah. is better than Scry. Yes. Yes. Uh, especially because of there's just so much good graveyard recursion in Commander. Uh, it yes. is excellently. Right. Oh, nice. So first Shockland, which is I think what everyone is most excited about reprint wise. The Shocklands are um, non basic lands. But you notice here it says Mountain Plains, which means that you can search it. You can use uh, fetch lands for it to search for a mountain or a plains. Uh, as, and it taps for either the red or the color, one of the two colors it represents. In this case, Sacred Foundry is red and white. As it enters the battlefield, you may pay two life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. I'll take they it. are excellently strong, and especially in Commander, where uh, losing life uh, is so much more you know, negligible uh, yeah. in that format. Um, they're just incredibly good. Yep. All right. Yeah, and also, you got it. Uh, you got it in your favorite colors too. I did. Actually, so I I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I like. I th I think I like Azorius a little bit more than Poros. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I like putting, uh, as they say, putting in a lot of effort to make sure that nothing is accomplished. No one can have fun. Yeah. Well, that's why I want to make an Esper deck. That's the absolute zero fun color. Yeah. I don't know. There's some stuff junk can do that makes me sad. So. Junt. A uh, junk. Uh, that's a uh, green, white, black. You mean Absin? It's just like it just uh, having to deal with like consistent recursion over yeah. and over, especially for some. Uh, I do want to make an Absin deck. Uh, right. Best card name in the series: Hypothesizzle. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Although I did want to uh, just minorly point out that um, I did like they kind of found a way though those uh, lockets. Yeah, the uh, guild lockets. I actually really like those. So um, they're just talking about the guild lockets here. There's there was mana. a. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a three mana artifact that can tap for either uh, of the color of their guild, or you can spend. So in this case, see how it, so it's a Golgari locket, so you can tap it for black or green. And you can spend four of either any combination of black or green and tap it to sacrifice the locket and draw two cards. So why do you like those? Uh, I just, I like efficient rocks with extra effects. And that card is pretty much just a better version of, um, what were they called? Uh, there was a similar uh, rock that had a very... The clue stones? Yeah, where they could tap for like two colors and then the advantage for, the I think Stone had was that they were two mana. Oh, true, true. So uh, but ha the, having the option to be able to just draw four cards though, um, or draw two cards for four uh, at the end of like someone's turn, if you really don't need the excess mana, I mean that's really good. So here we go. We have the Pelt Collector, as also known as Experiment. Two. All right, I'm I'm figuring this out. I've got the focus angle perfect now. Spell Collector, also known as Experiment 2, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 creature elf warrior. Whenever creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, but a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Pelt Collector. As long as you have 3 or more plus 1, plus 1 counters on it, it has a uh, trample. So people are calling mm. this Experiment 2, because the Experiment 1 card is basically that, except you can take off like 2 plus 1, plus 1 counters and regenerate it, rather than giving it trample. Yeah, this guy's really strong, though. Um, yeah. I mean, he can just consistently, really easily keep getting bigger and bigger, especially in a green deck. You're going to be convoking out your big guys, and this guy is... Uh, the fact that he also then gets trample once he gets big enough, that's like... Oh, yeah. That he's is going, just so strong. He's going so. in my Celestia Modern deck. I might even take Experiment 1 out for him, or the or the Dryad Militants, honestly. He's just that yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's really good. People are going to be looking for their play sets of those. Yeah. Uh, get, I don't know how good to he's going to be Commander. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's he's good, but... No, he doesn't have enough... Uh, the problem with a card like that is it just does not have enough immediate presence, and 
at the end of the day, that's basically just a creature that can kind of get big and gets trample, where in Commander, you could just play a creature that gets big and has trample. I, but I, I think that he's going to be good in specific strategies that are about gaining and moving plus one counters. Yeah, some yeah, I can right. Simic. Let's see what Miss Braska gives us. Uh, you don't follow the stories at all. The story, do you at all? Uh, not quite so closely. I kind of have like a general idea of what's going on typically, but oh, here, um, here's sorry. Here's an uncommon that is quite good, or I think is quite good. Circuitous route. Search your library for up to two basic lands or gate card and or gate cards and put them into the battlefield tap. Oh, nice. Yeah, that so, one's really good. So wait a minute. I mean, that's so I up to two basic lands and or gates. Like, I, I'm sure that just means like two lands at the end of the day. But right. the way that reads, you could also say up to two basic lands and up to two gate cards. I don't think that's it. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. It, it's definitely like so, you, you just yeah. two total. So if you were running so. a uh, tricolor deck and you have a budget, um, a a budget mana base this is a really good card yes it's, it's uh, a bit expensive for three mana for or for four mana three and a green but i mean if, allowing you to get your both fixing in is is really good yeah um and even in a uh, commander i think that deck could see some reasonably good play oh that's what i meant um, at the end of the day yeah it's just um it's a really good trigger for any landfall decks i mean it just put a lord wind grace deck together so i'm definitely going to be trying to get my own yeah, uh, I'm sure so. you, it's uncommon i'm sure you'll get it <laughs> yeah we'll see i don't tend to buy a lot of packs so i'll probably just try to find some I'll trade this trade one off of. I, oh, I, I don't have a need for it and i mean even though i've got a a uh Bant wall deck, I really don't need it. I, I don't think mm -hmm. it quite fits in the deck, and I have enough draw power that I really don't need the ramp. Um, but we'll see. Mostly, I think people are going to want to switch out their refuge, their their refuge lands, the ones that gain you one life on the enter battlefield for gates, and just use circuitous route for yeah searching. As for the, uh, well, if you want to keep it separate, yeah, I'll keep it separate. It's a good card. The rare is the Erratic Cyclops. So it is a for three and a red creature Cyclops Shaman. For it was zero uh, or zero eight Shaman. I'm having trouble reading this properly. So it is Trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Erratic Cyclops gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the spell is converted mana cost. It's a cool card. Yeah. So uh, again, kind of fitting into. Um... That theme again of I play spells and my creatures get really big, uh, kind of like the Steamkin. Um, there's uh, there's another card in this set that I think has some really interesting. Um, You're talking about the thunderstorm. Yeah, the the one that that switches power and toughness. Um, oh, that one, yeah. The uh, the that one it, I think has some really interesting potential with this card, where you just kind of like sneak in the throw because you could still swing even if you have zero attack. Uh, right. um, is you know unless it's a wall, then you can't. Uh, and then you know you just kind of let this slide through, and then you're like, oh, uh, yep, yeah, I use my one spell, and then you take eight. <laughs> yep, uh, I think it's cool. I would actually like to see it in a Joyra deck, just because you can set up lots of casts at the same time of really expensive things. Right, and actually, with how that works, when I'm thinking about it, uh, so when you cast the the, um, the spell that flips the power and toughness. So it would get plus one, plus zero until end of turn from the cast. And then right. the effect would go off. So he would be a one eight. And then the, would the, would the stats swap? And then would he become a nine one? Because so. uh, we'll, yeah. we'll have to look that one up. I'm that one. I'm not so sure about. Yeah. All right. Invert, or invert. That was the spell. I was yeah. thinking of. Oh, by the way, I like a lot of the dual, uh, the dual, uh, or split cards. Sorry. Speaking of, let's see if there are any in there. So Fresh Face Recruit is a cool card. I mean, it's just it's one red white for a human soldier, two one as first strike whenever it's your turn. It's a neat card. Not great, but a neat card. One of the funniest cards in uh, the set, Conclave Cavalier for green, green, white, white, is a uh, vigil as a four, four centaur knight with vigilance. When it dies, create two, two, two green, white elf knights with vigilance. As everyone and their mother has said, oh, so it's basically two elves in a centaur costume. 
<laughs> All right. The, Hiding uh, in a trench coat. Oh, nice. Charnel troll. So it is a uh, one uh, is a four four creature troll for one black green. It's trample at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile a card from your graveyard. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on a carnal tra troll. Otherwise, sacrifice it. And for black green, you can discard a creature card. Put a plus one plus one counter on. It's a cool card. I mean, yeah. I, uh, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, just uh, agreed. Yeah, he's really strong. Um, I think he's going to see a lot of play. Uh, yeah. Maybe not so much in commander, possibly. Um, I don't. I can't think of any commanders off the top of my head that he might work particularly really well with. But in any sort of um, Golgari, like a graveyard milling deck, though, I mean, it can definitely see that thing becoming a threat pretty quickly. Especially there's. Uh... Core 19 released a card that says whenever a card enters your uh, graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one bat token with flying. Hmm. So that, that combos nicely. And also, discard fu discard outlets are not always good, as good as sack outlets, but they're they're still useful. Yeah. All right. Hunted Witness, this is... If, so you know, there's the, the the mini cycle of the doomed the the doom missionary or the doom traveler and the uh, Doom to Center, mm -hmm. where they when they're one ones for one that when they or no they're one ones for two when they die they create a token. This just seems straight up better. It's a one one for one that creates a one one white soldier with lifelink. Seems pretty good. Yeah, gums up the board. It's a nice card. Luminous Bonds is always a fantastic card. Speaking of auras, I do like uh, Candlelight Vigil for four mana. You know, enchant target creature. Creature gets plus three plus two in vigilance. Um, this is going to my coworker who likes vampires, the Night Vale Predator. Oh yeah, uh, the like the Neo Vampire Nighthawk, basically. Yeah, blue, blue, black, black, flying, death touch, hexproof vampire with three, three. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's considerably fairer than than Vampire Nighthawk. Oh, here we go. Here is a fun, fun, fun card. Let me put cards down. So, chance for glory for one red white. Creatures you control gain indestructible. Notice it doesn't say till end of turn. It's just indestructible forever. Take an extra turn oh. after this one. Beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's an interesting one. Um, ye, what's interesting is since it's an instant, uh, you can kind of just cut into someone's turn if you're not doing a, um, if you're not just doing one on one, like if you're in a multiplayer game, you can kind of just say, "No, I want to turn after you." My and turn next. Me, me, I go first. Yeah, it has a lot of interesting properties. Where if you, as a Boros player, have built up a big board, and someone goes, "Well, he's a threat. Uh, I'm going to drop the wrath now and blow up the board," you go, "No," uh, no. but and now I get to go again. And I have this one last chance to try to just wipe everyone. And it might not even be a last chance. So, there, there are cards like Sundial the Infinite, which end yes. turn instantly, skipping the beginning of the end step. Yep. Um, yeah, there are some ways to get around it. The Gideon, there's a Gideon um, Planeswalker that creates an emblem that says, well, he, Gideon is on the board. You can't lose the game. There's yep. an angel from Kaladesh that says you can't lose the game. There's, oh, a couple, she's, yeah. there's a couple angels that that or a couple cards that say when you uh would when you would lose the game your life total is instead reset to to your starting life total and you don't lose the game instead or something like that yeah there's a couple little uh interesting little ways you and can get around then it. your stuff is still indestructible yeah that's the that's the big one i actually didn't notice on the first time either yeah your creatures are just permanently indestructible at that point so yeah now if you can get that, that out making one mm -hmm. creature indestructible isn't a big deal but all of your creatures indestructible especially if like that that yeah. angel's on the board and that becomes indestructible yeah your entire board just becoming unwrathable at that point that's huge especially um i mean you have the mana you can play yeah. this then wrath the board now it's an open oh. board, and then on your next turn, you can attack a second time. 
yeah definitely i mean you can just yeah you could just throw out any mass like just destroy everything in play i mean geez just get their lands while you're at it you have a board full of creatures yeah if it doesn't matter if you don't have lands yeah just go kill everyone i'm going to die next turn the lamb goes with me yeah (laughs) all right i like the card and hey it's my second mythic i'll take it come on there you go all right barge and sergeant hey there's a rare and or a a shiny in here but let's skip to the hey we're just talking about split cards so response and resurgence uh it's gonna be a while to get it there it is so response for um how, how does the magic community usually read that is that you know for boros boros which means red or white red or white uh, I would say most people say uh, red, white, red would say like, uh, we're just going to, for, for the purpose of the video, we're just going to say for Boros Boros. Yeah, sure. <laughs> for Boros <laughs> Boros, works. you cast response, which is an instant, deals five damage to target attacking your blocking creature. Just solid. It's solid. There's mm-hmm. most threats, especially in limited or in standard are going to be around that power level. Yeah. Stepping up from to where i mean a lot of people see like sort of the the golden the golden standard of burn is one ran is the one mana lightning bolt you know one mana deal three to a creature or player and to just add the one more mana and have the flexibility of it being either colors and it then dealing five damage is really it's pretty good uh the only downside of course being the you can't hit a player with it uh, because otherwise that card would be absolutely bonkers. So, you know, understandably, they they didn't let you get that far. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot you can take down for five. Um, and at just two mana, that's a really solid removal. Well, and here's another point. Gideon's Reproach, I'm looking it up right now, is... Come on, load faster, please. Is one and a white for uh, to deal four damage target attacking your blocking creature. So it's kind of strictly better if you're running a Boros deck. Mm-hmm. Because then, you know, if you never got the white, you can still play the red. Yeah. And it's one more damage. So let's take a look at Resurgence now. Uh, Resurgence is cool. I like this card. Get in, get in focus. There it is. So, uh, I'm logging. Creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance till end of turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Yeah, so you are you just get twice as many turns to just kind of wail on people. Yep. Oh, um, so when I said I was disappointed by Boros, the cards in it are great. I just was kind of hoping for some interest, like for them to really push themselves with Commander. You, you also wanted a different keyword. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The keyword really is the biggest disappointment. So, but yeah, this card is pretty great, especially if, you know, you had just dropped your chance for glory. Uh, well... You get to be really, really glorious in this final in this final punch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, all your creatures being indestructible, first strike and vigilance. So you pretty much are guaranteed for sure that all these creatures are going to get two full big swings in. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, a re- really solid five uh, uh, five spell. I saw that it was a dual colored land and saw that it was shiny, and I was um, hoping for a, a foil uh, shock. It's man. still pretty. It is still pretty. Oh, what's behind it? Oh, it's a Golgari kill gate. Oh, okay. But hey. Well, more say, gates. What? Doesn't hurt to have more gates. Yeah, well, you notice there, there are no basic lands. They're all gates. I mean, oh, yeah, that's here, right. Here are the basic lands I have pulled. Guildgate, Guildgate, oh, yeah. Guildgate, Guildgate, Guildgate. Now, they do have basic lands set from, wait, from the set, but they're going to be in the guild kits. Which I'm looking forward to. Oh, have, as interesting. I, I, I sold a few people this. It's funny because the guild kits that they're coming out with later, yeah, have, are they're more they have better reprints than C18 did. <laughs> yeah, I need to look a little bit more into. Uh, I, I've taken you, a peek at some of them, the uh, but yeah, I need to take another look. I mean, the uh, the Demir one actually starts with mission briefing. Yeah, that and that card's gonna be crazy good gateway plaza it's a gate that's a rupture oh. spire yeah i want like five of those because it's just another rupture spire yeah. uh, it's really good so, also isn't it technically a gate yeah it is uh, a gate i said it's a yeah gate. so you could you can also tutor it with um 
the uh, that one green spell. So this isn't uncommon, but here's another one of the split spells. Integrity and Intervention. Uh, so Integrity is one in a red instant that deals creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. And then Intervention is Lightning Helix for one extra mana. So two red, red, white. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, sorry, right. it gives you options. Yeah, but what we have is Ritual of Soot. Destroy all creatures, or for, sorry, two black black, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost two or three or less. Yeah, so incidentally going from a Boros card to probably the thing Boros would never want to see, Boros ever. <laughs> for that matter. Hello, yeah. Tokens. You all die now. Yeah, this thing is, this thing is brutal, especially coming out at four after your opponents probably just played a three drop, and Maybe you're just like, commander. yep, I'm just going to crush out your board. Just, it's it's good. Uh, I think it's going to be really good in Brawl, especially, where yeah. the tokens, where there's, I mean, just, there's, it's a slower format where people tend to build their boards up more because there are less Wraths. So yeah. having a Wrath is kind of good. Yeah, I, I don't see this being okay. so much of a card for Commander, except maybe in some kind of a specific deck that's building around that uh, that idea of, like, well, I'm gonna only put things that are like CMC four or bigger. But it's even deck, then, it's, it's a deck that you. It's well, but see, a lot of the uh, utility creatures are low CMC. Yeah. So I think I think there's yeah. some use for it. It depends on the play group and what you're playing against. Yeah, definitely. All right. Next. Set. Oh, hey. Uh, this is actually for an uncommon is a really solid split card. So invert and invent. Invert oh, yes. is an is it for an instant? Switch the power and toughness up to uh, each of up to two creatures. You just mentioned that one, but I think invent is the real trick here. For four blue red, search. Uh, you have an instant. Says search your library for an instant and or sorcery card, and or mind. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Yeah. So um, invent is interesting. It's it's a pricey tutor. But it is instant speed, which is really nice. And you got to factor in that you're probably going to be getting some some bits of cost reduction on him, especially in Commander. Uh, I could definitely see this card getting played in Commander because of Invent, uh, getting some you know ones and twos off of it. Uh, that Commander with the experience counters being able to Mizzix. chip it down. Yeah, Mizzix how could you forget her name? She's an Is it Goblin? And it's like <laughs> I don't play Is it. <laughs> I just disgusting. know. Kind of about their stuff, uh, but yeah, um, it's a fireman's. It's less effective fireman's. It's a very different fireman's foresight. Yes, yeah, um, but I mean, it's never bad to just have more tutors. Um, Here is actually a really solid in, uh, aura. Demotion for one white for for white enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't block and can't have its act of activated abilities uh, activated. So yeah, that I I think that these kinds of cards are the solution to a lot of commanders that have like, like uh, which is the one that the, the partner commander that ta that spend four and draw a bunch of cards. Oh, uh, I know what the you're Merfolk. talking about, but I can't remember the uh, name. Not yeah. Trist not Tristani. Um, but yeah, really um, that thing is a big hit on any uh, activated ability commander or, for or sure. Or experiment um, crush. Yeah. Yeah. Or, um, oh, uh, what's the, the, uh, the spore guy. Yeah. Okay, who makes uh, uh yeah foot? no hmm? no but yeah I, no. I think that's again why i want to make a tiana prison warden deck because i feel like yeah. that kind of card is going to be really good oh yeah absolutely uh as for the rare we have a beast whisperer oh two, yeah green green for a two uh two three elf druid whenever you cast a creature card or creature spell draw a card now this isn't an etb so it's not as good but it's still pretty solid. Still really solid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of green effects that uh, basically are that, but at that cost, that's really strong. And with a reasonably good body attached to it, too. So Yeah, and also, even if the creature is countered, you're drawing a card replacing the creature. Yeah. So, You know, I just realized the way Aurelia is holding her hand there is creating the Boros symbol. Oh, yeah. Huh. Uh, I never caught that. Better. Well, I'll, I'll take a look for the other guild leaders when I see them. Oh, if they, if they all have a secret secret sigil in there. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't think they have Lazav on the picture, so. No. Oh, would you even know it's Lazav? That's true. Uh, so let's see. Demir Informant is kind of like 
uh, what what's her what's her face the omen speaker, but it's a one four for three that lets you surveil too. It's that's yeah. going to be pretty good in brawl. I honestly want one of these, like a real version of that. Oh, like a physical yeah, uh, just, locket. Yeah, yeah. I bet I, I I'm surprised Wizards isn't selling those. Notion Rain is a cool card. I think it's better than people are giving credit for. One blue black surveil. You may uh, then surveil two, then draw two cards. Notion Rain deals two damage to you. Yeah, um, it's kind of a uh, lights into that. It's like a what is it? Something uh, scry the the bones. Uh, yeah, read the bones. It, it, it read the bones. There's a long history of black cards that are like the two to three mana range, and you usually have to pay some life and you get to draw cards. But these are just you get to add an extra mana to get some bonus little effects on it. I was a little disappointed by some of the knights in this set. Some of them, mm -hmm. like this one, for eight mana for seven and a white, you have a con uh, four or five human knight with convoke and flying. It's just, yeah, that's it's... a lot of resources to spend to get a four or five flyer. It's great, yeah, it's great it's and limited. Great, uh, deafening clarion. I'm getting a lot of oh, Boros. I'm getting a lot of Boros yeah. in here. Yeah, I'm sensing a theme here. Uh, so. For uh, is a sorcery for one red white. Choose one or both. It deals three damage to each creature, or uh, creatures you control have lifelink until end of until end of turn. Yeah, um, that card is really good. Yeah, uh, it's a strong three damage. Uh, you know, blowout. So in case you, as the Boros deck, were somehow falling behind, you can just wipe everyone off. You, um, or if you Boros just need a really big life. Commander? What? <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh yeah, just uh, get a good chunk of life in, do a bit of both. So, all right, for a foil here, we have Murmuring Mystic for a uh, uh, one mm -hmm. or uh, three and a blue for a one five wiz human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one one blue bird illusion creature token with flying. So it's a young pyromancer, but really good. It's a solid blocker, and it creates tokens. I feel like um, this would go really well in a lot of Spellslinger decks just to create bodies as you cast spells. Jared? Yes. Oh, you just, you like suddenly went quiet. I was like, oh no, he's oh, gone. Sorry, I'll have to no. this video for myself. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm a hack. So what do you think about this guy? Mm. You think I'm valuing more highly? What was the name again? Sorry, it's like because it's uh, Murmuring Mystic. <laughs> Murmuring Mystic. So I don't know. When I first started playing and I tried playing Spellslinger decks, like I never feel like I actually have anything protecting me. So this is just value off of the awesome instants and sorceries you go. play. Yeah. Um it's a little mm, I wouldn't it's say pricey at four, but you know, it works as a solid blocker, and then, yeah, you're just starting to generate a lot of nice value off of um, your instants and sorceries, and especially with Jumpstart, so you can just recast some of those instants and sorceries. You can definitely uh, build a pretty sizable block of 1-1 uh, birds, which you can throw some enchantments on them, have them punch people, just use them as jump blockers. Uh, there's a lot of utility with that. So, Demir agents are the worst spies ever. This guy is wearing a big old earpiece with the Demir symbol on it. <laughs> Did he, does he need to remind himself every day? But, oh, right. I'm a Demir guy. Let me put that on my ear. <laughs> but nobody knows about Demir. They're a secret. All right. Let's open this pack. Swarm Companions is kind of a weak card. Create two 1-1 one, one, uh, white soldiers with lifelink for three mana. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen better yeah. for four. Uh, do, do, do. Capture Sphere is fun. It's an yes. R enchantment with flash that taps things down. Yep, flash on it is really nice. Beacon Bolt is actually a fun card. Uh, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in exile and in your graveyard. That seems like a card that Kess would really like. Yeah, the fact that it also counts for your stuff that's in exile uh, definitely bumps this up, and you can use it twice, so Jumpstart. it's yeah. basically a, a removal you can use twice, so that's uh, that's really good. All right, Ignite. This is a fun one. So for one blue-red, 
counter target spell uh i or sorry not I, ignite ionize counter target spell ionize deals two damage to that spell's controller sounds fun to me <laughs> yeah it's just a it's just a little fun little like extra like you get a counter spell yeah. plus you're paying that one mana to basically just shock your opponent so or or you're, you've got cancel but you want to uh but you don't have both blues for it. This card is good. For right, right. Yeah. So it has some it has some nice flexibility for an is it deck that wants to run some counter spells. All right. Speaking of is it, let's open this pack with Ral on it. Oh, hey, Guild Mages Forum. Actually, real quick, let me read Sinister Sabotage, because I think this is a solid counter spell as well. So, for one blue-blue, you have an instant counters target spell, then lets you surveil one. Yep, kind of similar to what we were just saying. Yeah. You know, your counter spells with some little extra something attached. Which I like. So, Guild yeah. Mages Forum. Uh, so, tap for colorless, or... One uh, one and tap, add one mana of any color. If that mana was spent on a multicolored creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with additional plus one, plus one counter on it. It's solid. Uh, it's... it's solid. I don't really like it, to be honest, because you're basically having to pay one extra for... You're, you're having to pay one extra for whatever you're trying to cast. Yeah. Um, which in commander, usually you just kind of want to get your commander out. And the value of the plus one plus one counter is kind of eh. I it's think, not I super think it's great. Be great in the decks that really want it, like say a Joda deck. Yeah. Especially, I mean, it, it is. Especially mm -hmm. in Brawl. Yeah. I mean, it is nice that it does give you one mana of any color when you use the effect. So maybe in um maybe like an atraxa deck because you can just have her come into play right away with that plus one plus one counter and immediately start getting the value of um of uh proliferating it at the end of the turn that would be pretty decent so so here we go but um amara has the little celestia oh, yeah. right there and on her armor so yeah mm -hmm. some of the effects do create that I'll double, i didn't see that on the kind of sneaking it in there yeah, yeah I, I like neat art tricks like that yeah. I believe the term is easily amused. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Anything interesting? Night Veil Sprite. Hey, a fairy. I can hey. use that Una you gave me. Yeah, hey, there you go. Oh, this one's actually really cool. So Swath Cutter Giant. So four red white for a 5-5 five, five giant soldier with vigilance. And whenever it attacks, it deals one damage to each creature defending player controls. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, I like the aesthetic that he's just kind of like swinging his yeah. giant monster sword around, and he's uh, kind of plinking down everybody. This is the third copy of this card I have. I got two of them in my pre-release set. Tajik, Legion's Edge, one red white for a three-two hey. human legendary creature, human soldier with mentor with haste and mentor. So whenever creature uh, mentor creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. He prevents all non combat damage that would be dealt to uh, other creatures you control. And for red and a white, he gains first strike on a turn. He's right. I don't yeah. think he's good in commander. Um, he's pretty cool with the uh, that clarion, uh, the clarion bell that was uh, mentioned before. Because actually, well, actually, would that work? Because now that I think about it, he would die. The others uh, would and not then, take the combat damage. Oh, right. Yeah, they don't take the combat damage. I was in my brain. I read that as he gives them indestructible for a second. And I was like, no, wait, the damage would still be on him. But like, no, yeah, he would prevent all the damage on them. So if you mentored him big enough and then uh, Clarion, uh, which wouldn't be too difficult, um, then yeah, that would be really strong. You just blow out the board and He's all your hard creatures would be fine. Most mentors are three power or less. Uh, Aurelia can mentor him, but Aurelia yeah. Aurelia can mentor him. Uh, I mean, in in a standard deck, he's going to be great because he has haste. He hastes in and mentors and makes the thing that also is attacking uh, more powerful. I don't think... I think he's better than the original Tajik, and I think he'd be really fun in that Fire Song and Sunspeaker deck I was talking about. Yeah, That's what I'm talking about. Like That's actually a really cool Borosy thing. 
that... uh, I like yeah I, I like those kind of cards that make you almost you have to like reevaluate the value of like other cards just because of that commander I like that kind yeah. of stuff car the culprit is interesting it's uh come on get up there so three and a white for an instant destroy target creature with toughness four or greater I have uh in arena sealed I have lost a lot of Tristanis to color the culprit hmm yeah I could see that all right uh yeah not so much in uh, I don't really see so much in the commander value there's just a lot there's much better white creature removal so yeah but... I think this is a cool card vicious rumors oh yeah yeah for one for for black Oh, you get a sorcery. It deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent discards a card, then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. You gain one life. I think that's yeah. a great card. And in a, a a mill deck or a discard deck, I think this is a fantastic effect. Yeah, it's a small effect, but when you think if someone's running a play set of those, if they had like a multiple of them in hand and just like happened to get three out by turn two, like you've really burnt out someone's hand uh yeah. pretty severely uh so yeah it's, it's a neat little card <sighs> yes omni spell adept oh nice come on come on there you go omni spell adept four blue for a three four human wizard uh you may spend two and a blue and tap it you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost hi expropriate i'd like to cast you on turn five or turn six yeah um it, it's kind of a nice little uh the name is kind of a nice little cheeky nod to omniscience uh so so my only thing about this card is i feel like this is one of those cards that actually reads eat one removal spell yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it definitely fits in that line of like okay yeah that's not surviving but no yeah, one will things, let this live all things considered for something that is very much like designed to just get to use his effect he has a very big body yeah, like three four. four four toughness is pretty significant um there's a lot of uh low damage wipes that he would be able to very neatly avoid um sweltering signs lightning bolt uh i can't what uh definite clarion yeah, I can't guarantee he would see play in Commander, but I mean, with some haste effects, you could potentially cheat out some really nasty spells with that. Yeah. Um, so I know I keep harping on her. It's because I'm thinking about building a deck with her, that Joyra deck, because you get mm -hmm. her out. She has haste, and then you can instantly use the ability. Yeah. All right. So let's see what this foil is. U Urban Utopia. So one one out of green for an enchantment or enchant land. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted Land has uh, tap to add one mana of any color. This is going to go in Bant Enchantment decks. You're already drawing cards off of them, so it's just stacking on the, the Enchantment ETBs. I think it's a pretty solid common. Yeah. Uh, I think it's... Popper players probably are going to be happy to see this one. I think it's a solid card. Yeah. Um, I generally prefer the ones that let it so when you tap your land, you get some extra effects, but being able to turn it into just whatever color it can make and it replaces itself uh it's not bad well and i think those are the best auras the ones that replace themselves yeah all right let's take a look do you see any secret golgari symbols in the Vraska one mm, in this? it's kind of hard it's not yeah, it's a little quite easy focus it's, it's, my webcam is I, I i've had to jury rig something together here but i really wanted to do this so Oh. It had to happen. Uh, lots of defenders, and they're all. A lot of them are in Bant. I wonder why. <laughs> um. Oh, this is actually a a card worth talking about. The Sky Knight Legionnaire. Uh, for one red white for a human two two human knight with flying haste. It's kind of like a, a slightly worse Mantis Rider, but when you're being compared to something as good as Mantis Rider. You're in a good place. <laughs> yeah, this is um this one's a reprint. Uh this oh, is from cool. like original original Ravna ah. uh Ravnica block. Uh yeah. So, so Mantis Rider is uh red blue white for flying haste and what vigilance or, or something. It's really good. It's just it's keyword soup on a two two flyer. And it's just a solid card. Uh Oh, I like this one. Glaive of the Guild Pact. 
equip creature. It's a two mana artifact uh, with equip three, and equip creature gets uh, plus one plus zero oh for each gate you control and has vigilance and menace. So I mean, even if you don't yeah. have any gates, it still gives vigilance and menace, which is pretty great. Yeah, I mean, a little pricey at three, but yeah, then once you factor in the guild gates, that could get pretty good. I mean, even if you've only got like two of them in play, uh, three mana for that uh, power bonus and uh, all those other little keywords, uh, it's not bad. Here's a sweet card. Uh, I think this will be better in modern, but gruesome menagerie, come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. So it is uh, three black black, choose a creature, uh, creature card with converted mana cost. Um, one, let me, if I take my other hand out and just do this, nope, I'll just drop it. <laughs> I'm good at this. So, uh, choose a creature card with converted mana cost one in your graveyard and, uh, then do the same for creature cards with converted mana cost two or three and three turn those cards to the battlefield. So, yeah, I, I've got to imagine I'm not too, I don't play too much with graveyard, uh, but I have to imagine there's got to be some sort of really nice combo you can pull on Commander uh, with pulling that wide of a range of creatures um, at those costs. So I think some graveyard decks will definitely look yeah. into this because uh, that's, a, that's a lot of value on five to just get three creatures yeah. back. Well, and most Commander games tend to be one when you put more than one thing on the play at the same time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's going to go fast when we start seeing copies. Uh, I'm not sure what... I mean, there's a lot of defender hate in here. Like, Goblin Locksmith. <laughs> whenever it attacks, creatures with defender can't... This straight up can't block this turn. Uh, so, their only value. So, oh, Polius is running his uh, his Arcadius of Strategies deck. Everyone start loading up on Goblin Locksmiths. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh... Deadly Visit uh, for three black black. Destroy target creature and surveil two. Not bad. Rock Charger. This is interesting from a standard a standard and a limited perspective. For two and a white, you have a 1-3 uh, bird with flying. And whenever it attacks, target creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. In M19, they released, or, or sorry, in Dominaria, they released the Pegasus Courser, which is this exact same card with a different name. <laughs> and in M19, they were reprinted Pegasus Courser, which again is this exact same car with a different name. And now yeah. they've produced Rock Charger, which is... The only, yeah, the only <laughs> difference would be the subtype. When so, bird yeah. is, you know, there's more birds than there are Pegasi, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, hey. Here we go. I think my first Golgari rare. Uh, so status and right. Statue. Target creature... Status is a... Oh, is, no, this is uncommon, sorry. Uh, status is one in a green target creature gains plus one plus one until and death touch until in turn so it's kind of a removal and then statue yeah. is uh, two black green for an instant destroy target artifact creature or enchantment also removal so I mean it's not kinda, bad uh, yeah it's kind of redundant but it's it's good removal it's no assassin's trophy though <laughs> hey firemines research hey for blue red um enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery put a plus one plus one or put a charge counter on fire mines research uh for one in a blue remove two charge counters from fire mines research and draw a card for one in a red remove five counters from uh, fire mines research it deals five damage to any target that's a neat card yeah it's it's interesting um it doesn't really it's, offer so much immediate value um so but it's I'm, only value on casting the spell. Yeah. Where it would get kind of interesting is if you're able to get multiples of it in play, and then you're like double dipping on your spell casts. Uh, but that might be a little too slow. Uh, so, I think if you're running is it, that would be a bit slow. Yeah. This kind of almost looks like the is it symbol right there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Almost. I don't know why I'm focusing on that. <laughs> Look out to the elephant. I have to sneeze. Might end up... Excuse me one second. No. No, of course, as soon as I mute myself, I don't. Uh, Burglar Rat's pretty great for limited. It's a 1-1 one, one for... Mm. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black that makes everyone discard a card. I notice it says each opponent, so that's not bad. Yeah. Um, justice Strike! Justice! 
target creature deals <laughs> damage to itself equal to its power. Again, it's good removal for creatures that you know are utility creatures or whatnot. It won't get rid of like birds of paradise, but hey, hey, here's my second hey. one of these because I got one one of these in the pre-release kit. Hatchery spider. I also pulled one of those at pre-release. This is a nasty card. I've played it in uh, sealed and arena. For five green green, you have a five seven spider with reach and undergrowth. Undergrowth reads as follows, or just undergrowth cares about how many creatures are in your graveyard. So when you cast the spell, reveal the top X cards of your library, or X is the number of in, uh, creature cards in your graveyard. And they put a green permanent with converted mana cost X or less from the uh, among them onto your battlefield. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. This is also yeah. really good in Celestia as well as Golgari. Yeah, uh, this thing is really cool. Um, yeah, if you've got the ability to just uh, you know get stuff into your graveyard, um, you can just possibly just get a lot of stats off of them. Um, so pretty, uh, pretty neat little spider. Um, I do wish it wasn't specifically a like green permanent, but. Yeah. But, Even then, it's, you know, that's probably where you're going to be getting the biggest body from anyway, so. Yeah. Especially if I you mean, a lot of... Yeah, I, I'm probably going to be throwing one in my Wind Grace deck, though. Yeah, but, I could see that. Yeah. And it's not like the cards that you, uh, you don't pick are lost. Right. All right. Oh, hey. So, Connive and Concoct. Come on. So Connive is two Demir Demir, gain target uh, cre gain control target creature with power two or less. This is really good for dealing with uh, things like Birds of Paradise or a lot of um, like Jared. I'd love to play this in your against your Reese deck. Connive, just I would you, like you, your commander. You, you know, it's also funny. You can just steal Aurelia with it. That's true. <laughs> Oh, I'd say that nice, I'm not a moron. Uh, I would never ever think about making an Aurelia commander deck. No, <laughs> sir, not ever. Uh, right. Concoct is three blue Demir for surveil three, then return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That is bonkers. Yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah, if you've already got a decent creature in your graveyard, uh, or one of your ace creatures was sent to there. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, and in a way, it's almost like draw three cards uh, with the uh, surveil three, which is really nice. Um, so. You're just getting additional value of either, like, I have too much lands, I'm just going to get some land off the top of my library, and then just secure, like, a decent card out of these three. You might want get for my some next of the surveil turn. cards from your, for your Windgrace deck, too, some of the black ones. What I really um, like about yeah. the rare split cards is that on both on the left side, it shows the legendary creature, and on the right side, it shows the guild leader. Oh, yeah. So we've got uh, Etrada, and then you've got um, Lazav. And if I were to go back and find, we've got here Tajik and Aurelia. Huh, I didn't notice that. That's what you got me for, is notice the things that aren't actually that important. <laughs> Art is important. Art is important. Anything else here? That's, that's uh, Dead Weight's actually a fantastic limited card. Uh, one black for an aura. Enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. Yeah, solid pump down a creature or just straight up kill them. Yeah, yeah. and it gets around to indestructible things as well. Yup. Anything else? Nope. Uh, and so I saw a foil in here. Oh! Ah, uh, that's kind of disappointing. A What's that? It's a foil Narcomabia, or Narcomiba. Uh, for, what does he do again? So he's a 1 1 for 1 and a blue creature illusion. Flying, whenever it's put into your graveyard from your library, you may play it onto the battlefield. Eh? Uh, so, uh, uh, and it's a foil rare, but uh, it's shiny. <laughs> shiny. Oh, that's actually. I, I don't know. I, I the the narcomiba kind of gives me a case of narcolepsy. It's a little boring. I mean, it's not like you know what's where it's actually really good though, and I think where it would see a lot of play though, you would want to throw that in every surveil deck. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you're just getting that thing for free. So yeah, I, I actually mean, think that's good. I actually, you know what? I, I think that's actually really good. I guess because you're just uh, getting I, a solid I, I think blocker. They made it rare so that there weren't that they weren't in too many surveil decks. Possibly, but yeah. I don't think Although, it should. I don't think it actually deserves to be rare. 
That's interesting because it actually was originally an uncommon. So it's kind of interesting oh, that they would reprint it to a rare. So I think that's why. Probably. Artful takedown is a solid removal. Uh, what was it? So target uh, artful takedown is uh, two blue black for an instant. Choose one or both. Tap target creature. Target creature gains minus two minus four until end of turn. So that gets around indestructible. Okay. Yeah. It's not bad. A little pricey, but not bad. It's a little pricey, but you get both effects. Yeah. Uh, silent dart is super limited removal. Oh boy! Oh Everyone's boy! Favorite. Oh. Arc Light Phoenix is this, this is not a mythic card I'm excited to see. Look, Wizards stands a long true tradition of making really awful phoenixes. Yeah, I, they I, just I, wanted to keep up with the tradition. So for three and a red, you get a three-two phoenix with flying and haste. Beginning of combat on your turn, if you cast three or more instant sorcery spells, this turn return it for, uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's all things considered, it's really not the worst Phoenix. Uh, so here's where it would be good if there was a way to put it into the graveyard on its own, like uh -huh. with Jumpstart, actually. Right. But I just don't think it's worth Mythic. This is not a Mythic card. Yeah. Compare this to uh, what, what is the 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 phoenix from ixalan yeah which whenever it dies you create a phoenix egg that on your beginning of your turn turns into the phoenix again that's yeah. good this yeah is less than good i mean it's fine but it's definitely not mythic it's a i think three spells is just a like a little too much Especially to have to try to play around spells before combat yeah it's yeah, it's a little too tricky to to work around. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll see a deck that can make it work. I'm sure um, we'll see but... decks that we'll try to make it work, but I don't know. Right. I mean three three power and flying with haste is definitely nothing to scoff at. No, so. it's just again, it, that shouldn't be a mythic card. Yeah. That is rare at best. My second one. Oh, oh nice. Oh, I have apparently the Devil's uh, Luck. So Assassin's uh, Trophy. Destroy target permanent new opponent controls. Its controller may search their library for a basic land and put it into the battlefield and shuffle library. This can be an important modern card. So, so good. That card will get played in every format, like hands down. That's that's one of the best removals they've printed in a very well, long Fatal time. Push, actually. Fatal Push is, is just really good. At, so there, there are a few cards just... From, I don't play a whole lot of modern myself, but I listen to a lot of modern podcasts, and there are a few cards that you, you start to realize when you see it, it's like, no, that is a, instantly a modern staple. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a card that you're going to see in Legacy. Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, like it cannot be underestimated, like undervalued at just how good so, two mana remove any permanent I is. Plan, do you have one, Jared? I do not. Um, they're like. There, I, I'll, I'll part with this for cheap for you, like relatively cheap. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. No, we do business now. Darn it. No. <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is, don't buy one. I've got two now. I can sell one for the full price, and I can sell the other. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't mind one for my Wind Grace deck. Oh, it, that needs to go in your Wind Grace deck. Heck, yeah. you could even destroy one of your own things. Hell, I would. I would want a second one just for my Ur Dragon deck. <laughs> like. I would sure, want I would want card. I would want one of those cards for literally any deck that has green and black in it. I don't know sure. if I put it in my Ur Dragon deck. I don't know. It's it's just it's, it's good. It's good for it's good for everything. I, I, I'm it's happy. Like I'm happy having an English Unmaking. Honestly, yeah, that's fair. So I, it's like Beast Within, though. I, I I hinted at this. True Fire Captain is one of those cards I was talking about for uh, that would be good in the Fire Song and Sun Speaker deck. So red, red, white, white for four, three human knight with mentor. And whenever true fire captain is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's pretty nice. A lot of people were kind of comparing it to Boros Reckoner. Yeah. Uh, it's not as good as Boros Reckoner, but, but let me, yeah, let, me but... let me illustrate a, com a combo to you, my friend. I play true fire captain next turn. I play star of extinction. Yeah. <laughs> In a 20 life point deck or a 20 life point gain, that ends the game. Yup. Yeah, it's it's pretty cheeky. Um, so yeah, they, I, I'm sure that 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 combo in particular, I, I'm I'm it's gonna see some play just for the 
the impracticality, but for the hilariousness, it's it's going to see some uh, again, play. Again, in a deck that wants it, it's going to really want cards like that. Yeah. Like fire at the end of the day, I mean, if you're, like I mean, hell, what if your opponent plays their impervious great worm? Guess what? They don't want to see that impervious great worm get blocked by. <laughs> Come on, hit me, hit me. I want you to hit me. Yeah. You want to eat 16? Yeah, so it's kind of has that nice little value of like, if they're low enough, they just can't swing at you or you die. Yeah. So, um, And again, a lot of red board wipes like to do damage to every, do damage to board wipe. Yeah. So it's a non-bow with Tajik though, because he prevents all, all, all non-combat damage. That's true, yeah. Uh, so then in that case, you'd only be able to uh, cheese it out with any so, combat. Chamber Sentry. Enters uh, for it's a zero zero artifact creature construct for that costs X. Enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each color of mana ca spent to cast it. And then for X and tap, remove X plus one plus one counters from chamber sentry, deals X damage to any target. Then for Wooberg, white, blue, red, uh, green, return to chamber sentry from your graveyard to your hand. It is, it is a bad, uh, walking ballista. Is yeah, it's it is, really, really slow. It's good um, in sealed. It's really, I've, I've gotten great use for it in sealed. And with mentor mm -hmm. and the like, you can put more plus one plus one counters on it. Yeah. Especially after you spend the counters and then you can load them back up with mentor attacks. So it's yeah. got its uses, but I don't think that you're going to be interested in this card because it is not a commander card. Yeah, it's it's just a little, it, it's just too slow. And Which that's is saying something in a commander it. deck. Yeah. Because the way people are always sold on Commander is, oh, well, you get to play your big creatures. You get to play the stuff that is too slow for modern or whatever standard. Yeah, but then... But then know, we'll play wipes. against you and you're comboing off on turn four. And it's like, oh, never mind. Board wipes. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything interesting here? It's a terrible card. For a 3-1 three, for three with Mentor, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, oh, here is a fantastic card. You want something that's going to go in every single Tristani deck ever? Which one is that? Uh, it's like Conclave Tribunal. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's not working. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Conclave Tribunal. For three and a white, you have an enchantment with Convoke. Oh, there it is. Uh, Conclave Tribunal enters the battlefield. Exile target non land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. This could be a free O ring. Yeah, it's yeah. You can yeah just get a free O ring. It's really good. Um, yeah, I would actually probably try to get one of those for my restack. Yeah, you uh, should. Because yeah, that that effect is really strong. Here we go. Light of the Legion. I like angels. So for four white whites, you have a five five flying angel. With Mentor, whenever this creature, you know, we know what Mentor does. But when it dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on each white creature you control. Oh, that's worse than I thought it was. For some reason, that was just each creature. But no, it's just each white creature. It's an angel. It's an yeah, it's a little angel. more that's limited. Not I mean, exciting. Five, five, five on five, five on flying at six is pretty standard. Uh, the Mentor effect is just kind of like eh, it's okay. Um, but it, like so, here's the thing. Because I uh, speak as someone who's tried to make angel decks. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make angel decks, you're going to have a lot of very large angels. They're not going to get mentored very well. Yeah. Because the problem with mentor is it's attacking creatures. So you can't have like your, uh, I don't know, uh, your, your Thalia guardian of Thraben just sitting back and waiting right. while someone you know goes, let me show you how to attack. Mentor, mentor, mentor. No, you have to have those things attacking with them. Yeah, so you you lose out on a lot of the ability. Like it's, it's just it's a worse bolster in every way. Yeah, every I also single really, way. So disappointing. And I just really wish her uh, deck. You're mm -hmm. already gonna be really big. Yeah, it's just it's disappointing. Yeah, and I wish her effect was like enter the battlefield and not when it dies. Yeah. I think that would have. I think that would have maybe pushed it up to being a, a bit more playable. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, if it was an ETB, totally. Yeah. Uh, Locks it on Restore is really gross. It, I, I just played against someone who uh, had it with... Uh, it was a life game deck, had Resplendent Angel out, and uh, Ajani's Welcome. So hmm. it's a 6 mana with Convoke for a 3-4 uh, 
uh, elephant cleric that when it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. So he gained the five life, and then that activated uh, Respondent Angel, which gave him a free angel. It was pretty solid. It <laughs> took a lot of setting up, but hey. Um, Darkblade Agent is cool for a Surveil deck, but I would not want to build a Surveil deck just because, you know, that limits you to this set, this set alone. But um, it's one, uh, it's a th uh, two, three human assassin for one blue black. Whenever you've uh, surveilled this turn, Darkblade Agent has Death Touch, and whenever this com creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Tell me what you think about this one. Uh, one second. Devious cover up for two blue blue. Instant counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. You may shuffle up to four target cards from your graveyard into your library. Um hmm. I mean, I wanna just instinctually say expensive counter spell, it's bad. Um, I think there are some uses for it. But I think the fact that it also exiles um, the spell is pretty nice. Uh, especially it's like a nice way to stop your person from either flashbacking it if it's something really troublesome or something they can just fish back out of a graveyard. Um, the four cards back into library can be interesting. It It's definitely... It's definitely like a late game counter spell, which I guess helps mitigate the fact that it is an expensive counter spell. Yeah. But then you also kind of get some answers and some like additional. You get some additional fuel back into your deck. I think it's a limited uh, only so. card. It's definitely not a bone to ash. Yeah. So here's though a really good card. Someone looked up at Merciless Executioner and decided we need to do better than that. <laughs> it is Plague Crafter. Uh, it is probably not going to go into focus, but it's a 3-2 human shaman for 2 and a black. When Plaguecrafter enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Each player who can't discards a card. So it, it yeah. sacks planeswalkers. It sacks creatures. And if they can't do either of those, they discard a card. This is just a great card. Yeah, that card is, is nuts. Um, it's pretty much just a... Uh... Oh, what's that card? Slum Reaper? Yeah, it's basically just like a strictly better Slum Reaper. Uh, it's it's insanely good. Yep, and so here's another solid card. Uh, Gird for Battle. So for white, it's a sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each of the two target creatures. Not a commander card, but that's a solid card on its own. Yeah. Uh, Dawn of Hope. This is one of the cards I was actually really excited for. So uh, it's an enchantment for one and a white. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. And then for three and a white, create a 1-1 one, one light soldier creature token with lifelink. I've won sealed games with this. Yeah. Because they have only one creature they could attack with safe light. Like a giant, you know, trample worm or, or non, uh, a giant worm without trample or something. So they'd attack with that one creature and each turn I'd just make two tokens with lifelink and then dig for answers. This yeah. solves white's draw or this is one of those cards that solves white's draw problems like when boros yeah, can't normally draw cards well here you go now it can yeah that card's really solid and i actually see a lot of commander potential for that card um Can there's a lot Loro deck yeah i was just saying about to say that yeah a loro um a, a tem like a, a temna a temna uh deck uh there's a lot of like soft life gain decks out there um, and yeah, that effect's really good. Uh, it kind of makes me think of Mentor of the Meek just for life gain instead of getting dudes. Yeah. But, uh, and then it kind of just, well, so, the, yeah, the making the one, one thing is very, um, minor, but at the end of the day, like sometimes you just don't have anything else to do with your mana. You can just yeah. make it's, some chump blockers yeah, that mean, then can trigger the effect. So it's, yeah. Uh, it's all about mana efficiency. And if you don't have anything to spend that mana on, you're not being efficient. I think, yeah. I think it is. Nothing but solid. Oh, hey, I just realized there's the Demir symbol right there. See? Oh, yeah. Again, the worst spies. Wait, what guild am I? <laughs> Let me make my everyone know. Right. All right. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Join shield. So heroic intervention is one of those cards that you look at and go, yeah, this is a card that's going to be in a lot of formats. It's one little green for all creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible for a turn. 
Now, it, now for three green-white, you have an instant that says untap all creatures you control. They gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. It's just terrible. It's really yeah. expensive for... It, it's really pricey for something to just dodge a board wipe, really. Yeah. Um, and there's stuff you can just... Um, th there's like much better cards you can you can use that just have that same effect really especially one, in I, I like all of the split cards because they are all they all give they, 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 they're useful at all stages of the game and i like yeah. i am predominantly a mid-range player and that's how i like to play the game so let me see if i can so discovery and dispersal discovery is one and demir for surveil two then draw a card okay that's really good that's really good dispersal yeah. For three blue black, each opponent returns the target uh, non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand. Then discards a card. Uh, yeah, I I like that. Yeah. Uh, the dispersal. It's because I mean you're pretty much always going to be trying to hit whatever is the biggest thing on their board anyway. So, uh, it's a great little way to kind of chip their board back a bit. And then there, if that was their last card in hand, you just get it's rid rude. of it. So. And if not, it's still the most expensive thing they have, so it basically time locks them. Yes, yeah. So you basically just make them lose their turn. Yeah. So and hey, look at that, a steam vents. So it's nice. The, uh, is it? I'll take Shockland I'll take a... numero Especially dos. Especially because, as I have, you know, droned on about, I'm building. I want to build a uh, loser face deck. Yeah. So. Uh, a, a joy it's right my now. girl. What? Your, your I like Vraska. She's cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm surprised you haven't read the uh, is it uh, the, the storyline in uh, I, I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> it's all about Vraska. Yeah. It's I just really, I mostly just really like the designs for their Gorgons. Yeah. I just think they look really cool. Mephitic Vapors is pretty great for killing tokens for two and a black. All creatures gain minus one, minus one till end of turn, and you surveil too. Mm, yeah. Uh, venerated Loxodon. So it's four and a white for a four four elephant cleric with convoke, and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it. That's a, that's uh, pretty nice actually. It's, um, yeah, it, it's really good to kind of know like, hey, I didn't really need like maybe they just have like one big creature on board, and you're like, okay, I just want to like pump up into like a really big guy this turn. Yeah. Um. And then you're also pumping up your field. Yeah, I actually think that guy's really good. Yeah, so. I mean, 4-4 four, four for 5 on its own is, is not the worst body you could get for that mana cost. Yeah. It's not great, but it's not bad. I could see it getting played, though. Yeah, for sure. Maximize Altitude uh, is a fun card for limited. Um, especially with some of the other cards that combo off of stuff like this. But it's one and a blue for a sorcery. Or, or sorry, it's just blue for a sorcery. The uh, target creature gains plus one, plus one, and fly until end of turn, and it has jump start. Yeah, all those red creatures that love when you play spells. Uh, can, yeah, uh, like that one. <laughs> like this, this Cyclops, whenever you cast an instant or sorcerer's turn, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. It's a 4-3 uh, Cyclops with uh, one is it is it Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, here's or a like that 0-8 one you had. Yeah. Pitiless Gorgon. Uh, one Golgari Golgari for a 2-2 Death Touch Gorgon. Always good. Ah, Chemister's Insight for three and a blue, draw two cards, and jumpstart. So it's a little more expensive than Divination, but it's not bad. You get to do it twice. Yeah. Uh, the League Guild Mage is okay. It's three and a blue, tap to draw a card, or uh, X and red, tap Carpenter. Oh, no, this is actually a great card. So it's uh, blue-red for a 2-2 human wizard, and as I mentioned, you can either make it draw a card, or X and red, tap, copy target, instant or sorcery spell you control with converted mana cost X. You may choose new targets for the copy. I can see some uses for that. Inescapable Blaze is an uh, uncounterable 6 damage spell. Citywide Bust. Hey, we were talking about better white spells for removal. Oh, yeah. One white-white, destroy all creatures with toughness 4 or greater. Hey, Polius, you're playing that Bant deck again? No, we're gonna have to kill all of your walls. But <laughs> yeah, I don't um, that cards too. that card's really solid though. Um, well, it's kind yeah, of like... we're we're kind of like color the culprit, like especially in like a commander format. Color the culprit is like yeah, it's all right, but there's better. Citywide bust is a wrath on three, and if you're running the right kind of deck, it's not gonna hit any of your stuff. Yeah, like you're restable um, on that card. 
Yeah, so city, yeah, citywide bust is really good, especially in like a big multiplayer game. You can kind of just blow out a good chunk of people's boards with that. Yeah. And it's a nice little neat way to get around some big hex proofy guys and whatnot. Right. <laughs> Celestia players hate this card. Click now <laughs> to find out why. Yeah. Uh, Samala world shaper is pretty cool for two white green or two white green. Uh, you get a 2-1 Elf Druid. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. Reveal a creature or enchantment card from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom and it in a random order. I've noticed they've done a lot of on a random order now, rather than letting you determine. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, I didn't think Grenzo was that important. Well, hey, usually, baby. Oh, hey, it's the card I wanted to talk about. The Trot of the Silence. Oh, I can... love everything about this card. Do you do you want to read it all off? Or I guess no, you can give them the rundown. So two blue black for a three five legendary creature vampire assassin. A Trot of the Silencer can't be blocked. Whenever a Trot deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls, then put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they have three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. A Trot is owner shuffles uh, Etrata into a library. So a couple things to note about this. It's on combat damage, so you can't double strike with it, because she will instantly shuffle back as soon as she deals combat damage. Yep. Even if she doesn't put the hit counter down. Um, and if you're a commander, you can send her back to the command zone, but then she costs two more. So she's pretty slow. Jared, why do you like her? Uh, so I think that kind of uh, talking before where it creates interesting decks to build around the effect. Cause like when you see a card like that, you're like, well, this doesn't really seem like that good for commander. Cause you're going to have to keep recasting her and she's going to get more expensive. But if you try to design around the ability and finding ways to have her not get removed on her own effect. There's some really interesting stuff you can do. Um, there's like uh, some ways you can kind of get around that is uh, a lot of people point out uh, ninjutsu, which a lot of people, when you think of ninjutsu, you're usually trying to swing with something weak and then sneak in a ninja to hit someone. But it doesn't actually specify that you have to do it during the declare attackers step or, or declare blockers. Well, you can do it at any it. point. You can do it at any point during the combat phase. So even after damage is dealt, you can still swap them out. So you could kind of build like this errata ninja deck where she goes in, she hits, she gets the hit counter in, and then you swap her out with a ninja so she doesn't have to get shuffled. Um, there's some effects you can look at that can just uh, like end the stack. We had mentioned uh, Sundial of the Infinite. If you didn't have anything to do on your second main phase, you could just immediately end your turn in response to the shuffle. Uh, and then you wouldn't have to shuffle her away, and you would still get all the effects. Um, I've seen some decks try to design around uh, making clones of her with, like, Helm of the Host or using the equipment that gives Myriad. Uh, so you can kind of hit... Yeah, so you can kind of uh, hit everyone. And even at the end of the day, if you don't build around her effect for the win condition, which is completely understandable, because, I mean, it's a lot to have to it's work with. Slow win condition. Yes, it's a very slow win condition. At the end of the day, the, she is just a very solid card. I mean... Uh, yeah, she's 3-5 that removes on attack. Yeah, it's just a really strong removal spell that can potentially keep coming back. It's, you know, for that 3-5 in stats for 4, uh, and it can't be blocked, you can just sit on this creature, just maybe just plink some shroud on her, and just sit on it until you find an opportune moment to be like, yeah, that's too much of a problem. I'm going to go get rid of that. So, yeah, I, I love this card. This is my favorite card in the set, like, hands down. So, so Glowspore Shaman, green, uh, black and green for a 3-1 Elf Shaman. Enters the battlefield. Put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Put a land card from among, uh, from your graveyard on top, uh, on top of your library. Sounds like that's going to go in your, your... Could go in your Wind Grace deck. Yeah. It's not bad. All right. We're getting close to the bottom here. I actually have not gotten any duplicate rares. Yeah, that is surprising. I was <laughs> kind of thinking about that a little bit, uh, okay a little bit before. I would like to yeah. not get duplicates now that I'm shifting into commander. Oh no, you want those duplicate uh, uh, shock? Okay, that's not true. I, I I do have duplicates <laughs> of uh, Tajik and the Assassin's Trophy. 
Oh, boo-hoo. Oh, no, I have duplicate I'm assassin sure you just trophy. feel so bad about that. Oh, this is a card I was excited for. Swift Blade Vindicator. So, red-white for a 1-1 human soldier with double strike, vigilance, and trample. This is the card you are supposed to mentor. Yes. This is mentor fodder. Yeah. You know, and I just realized you've gotten great. every Commander. you've gotten every Boros rare except one. Except the one that I actually want, even though I've been complaining about it. The the Legion War Boss, yeah. What, okay, okay, so this oh, that's true. I haven't gotten Aurelia either. Oh, oh yeah, right, and Aurelia. Oh, that's true. I you would like Aurelia because I still do want to build a commander deck with her in it, or even just a a, a standard ish casual fun deck. Yeah. Because again, the group that I play with, they're mostly casual and they're not really that. The decks aren't that great, but it's all, it's all for fun. Oh, here's a fun one. Ornery Goblin. Uh, two in red, or one in red for a 2-1 Goblin Warrior. Whenever it attacks, or whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals one damage to that creature. Yeah. So that's so kind of nice. It, it, can trade, it can trade up into things that it yeah. shouldn't be able to. Uh, and a lot of times, I think people just let it pass through. So, hey. Hey. Niv-Mizzet Peron. So nice. blue, 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 red, red, red. Legendary Dragon Wizard or 5-5 five, five Legendary Dragon Wizard. It can't be countered. He has flying. Whenever you draw a card, he deals one damage to tar any target. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. He's a cool card. That, yeah, that casting cost is unforgiving, but... Yeah, that casting cost is relentless. Like, you are absolutely only running this in an is it deck and nothing or else. Or something that just um... can cheat things into play like Joda or whatever. Yeah, so, but yeah, the effect is really nice. Um, it can just, you can just start generating a really solid engine with him. Um, you know, just being able to plink things off the board. He can just start chipping out someone's planeswalker. Uh, yeah, he, he's really great. And being unable to be countered is, is he will really, really good. All right. And the garrison sergeant for three red, white. This is my foil. I love the foiling on this guy. Uh, so here's a three, three, uh, Vashino soldier. And as long as you have a gate, he has double strike, hmm. which is kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's enough for, uh, gate deck would definitely be like a standard deck. You're not going to see that. In yeah. There's no way you could have enough gates. All right. Do, 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 do. Another Night Vale Predator. Hey! We are hey, just talking about speaking this. Speaking of Legion War Boss. So for two and a red, you have a 2-2 two, two Goblin Soldier with Mentor. Whenever this creature attacks, blah, blah, blah. Beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one Red Goblin Soldier. 1-1 uh, red, one, one red Goblin Creature Token. That token gains haste until end of turn and attacks this combat if able. This is a good Mentor card. Yeah, I really like this guy a lot. I, I'm honestly even considering this card for Perforos. Oh, I'm not going to lie because he comes out the turn before you would want to play Perforos. And then when you get Perforos into play, you immediately get the value on that combat. Um, yeah. I, I like this guy uh, quite considerably. I, I think he's just a value generating engine. Um, and even if you don't swing with him, just getting those one ones every turn uh, is is good. Um, especially it could with be really mentor. significant if they got like a one three to block, but you know. Yeah, still. but even then, yeah, if they if they've got that one three and you just swing in with your uh, Legion War Boss, then then you've got a two two and a two two, and they can't uh, deal with it. So. Yep. Risk factor. This is a fun one. This is one that you want to storm. Uh, a target opponent may have risk factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw three cards. And it has oh, a jump yes. start. It's two and a red. Yeah. It's an instant. It's a neat card. It's not bad. Uh, um, it's definitely better cards, but I mean, do, it, the the giving it jump start is really neat though, because it's like that's a lot of resources that you're. It, I don't really see this as a commander card, of course, but um, just as something to play in standard, I think it's yeah, pretty I neat. I think it does have um, more of an impact on standard when it's yeah, because when it's three uh, mana. What, what is that? Yeah, twenty percent of your life versus ten percent. Yeah, uh, three mana to draw three cards because I, I, unless the, your opponent is like desperate, they should probably almost always be taking the damage. Um, because like being able to draw three cards um, is just. The amount of value you can get out of that is just way too good. And frankly, um, and, deck, they're already going to be super low. 
And yeah. in that case, by the time they're low, if they, you haven't killed them already, your hand is empty. Yeah. And it having jump start is just great because then you can just play it again. Uh, so that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot, that's potentially just eight damage right there you can get out of, uh, out of that. So yeah. that's a lot on one, on one, you know, card resource. Oh, this is a great card. Bounty of Might, four green, oh, yeah. green, instant. Target creature gains plus three, plus three until end of turn. Target creature gains plus three, plus three until end of turn. Target creature gains plus three, plus three until end of turn. So you could have three creatures gain plus three, plus three. You could have one game plus six, plus six, and another game plus three, plus three. Or you could have one creature gain plus nine, plus nine. Yeah, it, it has a lot of interesting versatility. Um, it kind of runs a very similar um, a vein of green... Uh, mono green uh, pump cards. Um, uh, we're definitely no stranger to that. Um, you know, Might of Oaks, uh, what a Giant Growth, uh, cards of that of that nature. This one's a little more expensive than most, but you certainly get uh, you get a lot of stats out of that. Um, I mean, that can just close out a game by itself if you just you know swing with a bunch of dudes and oh, one of them got through. Okay, okay. six mana, take nine. That's that's a huge punch. So, yeah, and especially in a Selesnya deck where you're just you're going to get something through because right. you've just got so many small guys. Uh, and imagine so. if that's something that gets through has infect. <laughs> yeah, or it's just even just uh, as like a really effective tool for trading. Like they want to block a bunch of your one ones with like reasonably sized three threes or four fours. It's like okay, well I'm gonna bounty of might and take out like three of your guys. So. Yep. Pen Ultimate Pack. Uh, let's see. Here. Come on, let's see that Aurelia. Let's finish the cycle. Yeah, right. No, but oh, baby. Oh, this is one nice. of the, cards that, the other card I really wanted. Divine Visitation. So for three, white, white, an enchantment. Uh, when If one or more to creature tokens would be created under your control, that many 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. You have to read the flavor text. It's the best one in this set. The angels appreciated the offer, but politely declined to eat any bird seed. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Yeah, I, I like this card. It's oh. really neat. Um, the, 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 I I wish, <laughs> I wish I had a token deck that this worked for, but because my token decks combo off the creature types, it doesn't. But I have a, a token deck where this would be amazing for. Yeah, being able to just turn your tokens because there there is a lot of easy ways to just make creature tokens. Um, and yeah, usually turning what's gonna be a one one into a four four with flying, and they get vigilance yeah, too. I forgot it, about that. It turns your oh, one one elves into Sarah angels. Yeah, all yeah, all your one ones get turned into Sarah angels. That's just nuts. Bonkers. It's a bit expensive. So good, but also if you're running a Celestia token deck. You got green. You're gonna win. Oh yeah. Be fine. Yeah. All right. Last yeah. pack. Then actually, I have to go. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yes. That's a good one. So I did not get Aurelia, but she's not going to be expensive. But you got a card that you could run in literally any commander deck ever. So. <laughs> that's. Um, so, That's Chromatic really Lantern is a three-mana artifact that says, lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color, and it itself taps for one mana of any color. Yeah, this is one of the best three-mana rocks just I'd, I'd ever. I'd say it loses out to Darksteel Ingot. Was that? I'd say it loses out to Darksteel Ingot because it's indestructible. Oh. <sighs> I, I mean, the only stuff it really loses to are, like, your mana crypt mana vault kind of things. I disagree. Um, you I know, I think it's good, but it's so, especially in anything that's like three color or higher, like it, it's almost like a must run I don't just know, because like, I, my, my mana budget in my Ur Dragon deck is pretty budget, but uh, they, I but don't it, often it's... have that much trouble paying for uh, what I need. I can think of maybe one or two times that I've really sat down and gone, I can't play my turn because yes. I don't have all the mana for it. I don't have the right colors of mana. So I, I'm not saying that Chromatic Lantern isn't good. I just think oh yeah. I just think that Darksteel Link gets better because it can't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Um and 
Actually, that's about it. I mean, the Mana Vault and Mana Crypt, yeah, are, are definitely amazing cards. Where I really like that card is for when you're running lands that are like Terramorphic Expanse or Evolving Wilds, because you can just immediately use those lands and not have to wait to search for the land to become the land that you then need the mana for it to be. Yeah, all of that's the utility a... lands like Crucible, the Spirit Dragon, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's or, where that's where or, I think uh, this card really what's, shines. What's that one? Uh, the Shrine of the Forgotten False Gods, or whatever the one that you. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Temple of the False Gods. Yeah, so you even can't if tap it unless you early. have five lands, and it taps for it's basically a soul ring at that point. Yep. Yeah, I know yep. that's that's pretty good. So again, it's a great card, and I'm really happy to have it. So. <laughs> I didn't well, get yeah, oh, overall, I'd say you did a I I, pretty dang good job. I, I mean, I you got, what, two shock lands? Two shock some, lands. You I got, got a uh, Assassin's before. Trophy. Um, yeah, some really good stuff in there. I did not, the, I wanted the Thousand Year Storm, but I didn't get that. I don't think that's going to be that expensive. No, I don't, and I don't think that card's, yeah, that card's not going to be crazy expensive. But I think with what I've pulled, I definitely want to make the Joyer deck. Or not, yeah, the Joyer deck now. I think that. Yeah, if anything, this box was screaming at you that you you also want to make Boros, <laughs> or that I should make Boros, <laughs> or that you should. It knew it knew your heart. Maybe you a know. Boros Brawl deck. That's a nice thing about Brawl is it's less of a it's a less of a financial commitment. B it's less of a intellectual commitment. Like, yeah, you don't really have to work that hard. Like, I'm not saying Brawl decks aren't fun or aren't difficult to make but like you don't have to work as hard to make a brawl deck as you do it's a day's yeah. process to make a commander deck you gotta sit down you gotta open all the ancient tomes of edh rec and um i don't know what, what's the other site that you people use for that i know there's a second one but brawl is just all right let's take a look at what standard cards are good for this okay yeah throw those together <laughs> i made uh i made my uh exertion deck in an afternoon and that was a fun deck uh, I'm glad that my coworkers don't care about things cycling out of standard because I can keep that deck, <laughs> uh, and I would not have bought the deck if yeah. I uh, couldn't have done so. that because there's no way you can upgrade that deck. Oops, sorry, I did not mean to just kick my micro my my camera. Oh, it's all good. Uh, well, thank you so much for well. What, so, what do you think? Uh, do you think that? Uh, do you, uh, do I think? I think. Well, I mean, I guess. We know what you're going to want from me here, specifically the Assassin's Trophy and <laughs> maybe the Atrada. I mean, she's not going to be hard to get. Uh, I've already got a friend who promised he, he was going to give uh, he was going to trade his Atrada to me. Right. So, but yeah, well. um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess as in terms of me and what I was looking for, um, I guess it's just specific cards. Yeah, Atrada um, was a big one. The Assassin's Trophy. Uh, I mean, really, when you kind of you know, when when you're playing, you know, just full out commander, you know, you're not holding any punches. It's it can get pretty hard to find cards um, that are going to kind of replace what you're already running because you're typically just running the best of whatever that tool needs to be. So unless you get something like an assassin's trophy, right, right. Uh, in case you make something like assassin's trophy, which then just probably invalidates the second best of. Um, but there's certainly like there's a lot of fun cards in here like something uh, that didn't come up the yeah. was like uh no camaraderie i actually really like that card i'm i'm gonna be putting that card in my uh on my elf token deck for sure um it's a really nice source of draw um so uh like hatchery spider we brought up has some uh pretty interesting applications that can be used in uh certain graveyard decks um and uh yeah overall i'm i'm still really excited to see what what else comes out of uh this journey back into ravnica that we'll get uh, especially with the uh, next set of guilds coming up so already looking for the next set of guilds yes uh i my favorite guild is gonna be in that one so what is your favorite guild uh, i think i'll keep that as a surprise uh raptus mm-hmm -mm. So I'm excited. I will be excited because Orzov is a lot of fun, and my the first deck I ever built was Orzov Knights deck. I'm not counting nice. on the weird uh, Umbra deck that I made back when I was first started playing with Jared. That doesn't count because I gave all the cards away. <laughs> I do. I do regret giving Chase my Call Me Hydra. I wish I still had that because it was the first Mythic I ever had. Yeah, but it's okay. I'm trying to remember, like. Uh... 
I think I still might have the first rare I ever got, but I don't remember. But it was a Wither Scale Worm back in Shadowmoor when I first started playing. I first started playing Shadowmoor. Anyway, I do have to go though. Okay. So, yeah, I gotta so make some for, dinner. Thank you for uh, Jared for co-hosting this, and to you, the listener, thank you for watching. In the comments, please post what you're excited about for Ravnica or what card in the pre-release that you you have that you're most happy to have have had. Um, thanks again for watching. Uh, this has been quite the video. We'll see you all next time. Have a good night.